Hey gang, we're in Justice, Illinois today, a western suburb of Chicago, and we're at Resurrection Cemetery here. And we are going to visit the grave of a very young man who served in the Navy in 1918. In fact, he was a boy, he was underage, but as many boys in the World War I and World War II and so forth would, they would go, they would answer the call knowing knowing that they were too young to fight, but wanting to fight for their country. And this one such brave boy, Matthew Duller, we're gonna go visit his grave. I wanna thank his nephew, his, actually it's his great-great-nephew, also named Matt, who suggested the story. And let's take a walk, and I'll tell you what happened. And as we walk, I'll tell you a little bit of the history of the time. Again, the world seemed to be always in conflict as it is today. But there was a ship. It was called the USS Annapolis. And it was the first of many. So later, bear that name. It's a famous name. Now this USS Annapolis, the first was an American gunboat, gunboat number 10. Her keel was laid down on April 18th, 1896 in Elizabethport, New Jersey, and she was launched on December 23rd, 1896. Following the commissioning, the USS Annapolis operated along the East Coast and the Caribbean Sea engaged in training missions and in March of 1898, she was assigned to the North Atlantic Fleet. Why? Well, you see, by April of that year, the United States had moved to the verge of war with Spain over conditions in Cuba. By the end of December 1900, she departed, bound for the Far East after finishing her duties and steaming via the Atlantic, the Mediterranean Sea, the Suez Canal, and the Indian Ocean. The warship would arrive in the Philippines at Cavite, April of 1901. Now, there are many pronunciations for Cavite, by the way but I've been in the Philippines, in Manila, and this is how they pronounce it. Now she remained in the Far East for the next three years. And then the USS Annapolis returned. Now at that time, the history gets really interesting because she had departed the Honduran coast where she had been working and she headed for Mexico. Now there had been a succession of coups which had unseated the first, the first leader, President Porfirio Diaz, and then his successor, Francisco Madero. So this general, his name was Victoriano Huerta, had seized the reins of government but many others, including the infamous Pancho Villa, Francisco Pancho Villa, contested his seizure of power, which he loved to basically add it to all of the mayhem in Mexico. So for the next six years, Annapolis patrolled the Mexican coast, and they were there to investigate all the conditions protecting American interests and assisting American refugees. Now, although she spent most of her time along the Mexican coast, she would return periodically to California for repairs and maintenance, getting provisions and training. Now it was June of 1918 when she moved through the Panama Canal to begin duty out of New Orleans, Louisiana with the American patrol. 
And that is where she cruised the waters off the Gulf of Mexico until April of 1919, at which time she was detached from the American patrol. Now, before she moved, before she moved, she was involved in some coastal activities still there in Mexico, but there was a particular town called Tampico. And there would be a very, very bad incident that would happen there. Very bad. Well, the men were, the men were granted shore leave and apparently there was some type of fight or there was a riot and you know Matthew was part of the guys on shore leave young kid and they probably picked on him I mean he was 15 maybe they were making fun of him baby face whatever but we can only speculate because there are no details but what we do know is he was beaten to death the official Navy record shows that he was, it says in the book, he was clubbed to death, the details, but it was much worse. It was much worse. It was just tragic. They were able to recover his body and bring him, bring him back to the ship. And he was already dead. It's an interesting stone here. Beautiful picture of this man. 1912, it looks like he passed. As I said, the official Navy death report said Matthew was clubbed to death. No details, but we can look at the record. We see the date and time of death, 10 p.m., April 5th, 1918. And it says the date and hour of receiving of body, 9.15 a.m., April 12th, 1918. Strangely, somebody had rubbed out the name of the cemetery and address of consignee. And nowhere, nowhere is it stated that he was only 15 years old. Well, the Navy concealed that fact. In fact, they apparently told the newspapers that he was 18 years old. Beautiful statue here of an angel. Let's see if we can see the inscription here. Well, of course, they brought Matthew back. They brought him home. As far as the USS Annapolis, she was eventually detached from the American patrol. As I said, she served as a school ship on loan for the next 20 years. In July of 1920, when the Navy had adopted its alphanumeric system of classifications, USS Annapolis was given a new designation, PG-10. Sadly, on June 30th, 1940, her name was struck from the Navy list. She was turned over to the Maritime Commission for disposal. And presumably she was then scrapped. Now, Matt had told me that his grandmother, who was 92, had told him, you know, we have some oral testimony here that 
Father Lewis, when it was time to see the body or identify, I mean, they said, don't, don't look, it's really bad. But he wanted, of course, to look anyway, and he did. And he was horrified because he quote unquote said, my boy was butchered. So it was bad, very bad. Well, here is Matthew John Duller's grave, right up here. And they have a beautiful stone here. And I can tell you that the men of the ship paid for this, created this. The parents are buried here. And let's start with paying our respects. I believe this is the father. This has to be Lewis. Yes. 1867, 1941. 1941. Remember December 7th. It's when we entered World War II. I wonder what month he died. Presumably just before we entered the war. That's the odds, we'll have to check. And mom, Mathilda, Mathilda, Matilda or Mathilda? You'll have to help me with that pronunciation, but 1872, obviously younger than Lewis. She passed in 1953, so. 12 years later, she passed after Lewis. So let's take a look at the stone here. It says, erected by the boys of the USS Annapolis in memory of Matthew John Duller, who died in the service of his country at Tampico, Mexico, April 5th, 1918. And here it does say, his correct age, 15 years, 8 months. And it says, rest in peace. And there we see the naval sign. USN with the anchor. It's a beautiful memorial here. For Matthew with his parents. Buried together. As I said, he was like one of the many boys who served in World War I and II, who answered the call even when they knew they were too young. You can just imagine on the day of his burial here, they did have a big gathering, the flag folded, and it was said that the rifles were shooting the Navy's traditional 21-gun salute. God bless all those men, and we thank all of them and those who served and all those that serve now for your sacrifices. Rest in peace, seamen. Matthew John Duller.